Hello everyone, welcome back to our Rhino tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to model this project from the Raman Velocity inside of Rhino. And before that, make sure that your unit is feet. All we're going to have is this one rendering and we're going to see how we can build a model based on this one image. First, I will go to the top view and then draw a curve. So we see that there's this curvature here and then there's another curvature and there's one last curvature. And uh, we see there are one, two, three layers for this model. And let's see how we can do it. First thing first, I will try to make this curve. I will draw one point here, one point here. I will hold shift, one point here, one point here, and then one point here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I will go to perspective and I will try to find a view, see if this is close enough to our reference photo. Offset this for 45 feet. This looks all right. The next part is I will delete this because we don't need it for now. And then I will copy paste it. And then I will select this new curve. I'll select this point and move it here. Also move this point. So we can see that this per curve and this curve they have a lot of part that's overlap with each other, which is exactly what we want to mimic this part. So the next thing I'm going to do is I will, I will extrude it down. And then if I turn on the control point here, I'm not allowed to. We only have some control points here. That's because extrusion is a very special algorithm inside of Rhino. In order to make it normal, I will just explode it. And then I will select this turn on the control points. Now I can select those control points and start our process. I'll select those two and move it down a little bit to have this kind of retaining wall. And the next thing I'm gonna do, let's measure this from here to here. It's around six feet. So 24 minus six, I will do 18 feet. So 18, I will select it, explode it, and then turn on the control points. This one and this one and then adjust the curvature. I'll go to the top. And then what I'm gonna do the next is I will offset this surface. I will type in offset surface and I will flip this in the distance again, 45 and the solid I will turn to yes and the loose, I will turn to no. And I'll explain to you what the difference is in a second. I will turn on the ISO curve. And you see that there are so many ISO curve. Well, some people will argue that this ISO curve looks so cool, but actually, especially in industrial design, we don't want to see those ISO curves. Why is that? Let's take a look. I will make a copy of this and I'll offset this. And the solid yes, loose to no and we will offset this. If I offset this, flip it and lose to yes, this is what I'm gonna get. So you can see that in this case, there are far less control points here. But in this case, there are so many control points and the uh, ISO curves. If I explode those two surfaces and select this and select this one, turn on the control points, you will see there are so little amount of control points. There are a lot of benefits of this kind of surface. First. If I move least amount of control points, this curvature will be maintained and this surface is gonna be very smooth. But for this case, if I turn on the control points and I select some surface or control points here, this is what's gonna happen, right? Some very weird transition will happen. So in general, less control points it is, better it is. It's just easier for us to control the surface. At the same time, uh, the continuity often can be guaranteed by less than amount of control points for a surface and single span, which is that the control points amount is one like bigger than the amount of degrees. Uh, it's the best. I'll explain that also. I'll explore this again. I will type in rebuild. And here, this will tell you how many control points they have before. They have five on the U direction, two on the V direction, 
and the degree wise they have three degree on the u direction a uh, one degree on the v direction right here they have span counts v direction is one span which is simply 2 minus 1 equals 1 and on u direction which is 5 minus 3 which is 2 this is not the very good it's best like five control points and four degree but that's okay we're gonna go with it so i will cancel this the numbers in this little box is are your target right if i choose this and hit okay our surface is going to be changed put much more control points here but if i go back and um right here i will type rebuild you're going to go back to the previous five two three one so this is just for the sake of explanation and some basics about how Rhino is working. Do you offset surface? Loose to yes. And uh, hit OK. So if I select everything and type in zebra, this surface, you cannot see it because it's flipped off. So I'll flip it here. You will see that the continuity is not good because we don't have enough control points here. But again, in architecture, it's not a big deal because all we have to do is just put some stucco on it or some other material. And then this is the first layer of overall shape. And let's make a comparison with our target, right? We see a lot of space here, but right here, we don't see that kind of situation. So what I'm gonna do is first, I will delete this one. And second, I will find the perspective that's close enough to this view we are referencing to. So somewhere here looks fine. And then I will go to here, click named views this camera I will save the view to perspective. I will hit OK and I will get one. And then what I'm going to do is I will rotate it. And if I want to go back to that perspective, I can just double click it and I'll get it. So since we explained that earlier, this is not exactly uh, what we want. What I'm going to do is I will delete those surfaces and I will again turn on the control points and move it here a little bit more. So it's not exactly the same because of the angle. Let's just compare it one more time. This is still too sharp. So what I'm gonna do is I will turn on the control points one more time. the perspective i will just go with this for now so we finished the bottom layer and then we finish this one let's figuring out the top one what i'm going to do is i will come over to surface and cl click this little triangle here and duplicate edge so i will select this and hit enter turn on the control points you can see that uh, we have this great curve that we draw earlier select this control point and then start the moving process just like what we did earlier Okay, just keep in mind, that's our target. So also we are trying to overlap them. All I have to do is lock this in case I accidentally select that surface and I'll move this. Again, we don't have enough control points, so there's no way we can make them completely overlap after move those control points around. So. Uh, we are just going to go with it and trying to find the closest solution. That's all we're going to get. I will unlock this and I will go to shading mode and I will start to extrude this. This time, let's take a look. We set this up as 24 feet. This time looks like a little bit shallower, about 70%. So I would just say let's do like 18 feet. Again, offset surf and then flip it 45 and get OK this overlap is too much look at here it's just a little bit on the edge go to perspective so i will go back again this is extrusion so it's different i will explode it first and then i can turn on the control points start the moving process go to perspective i can make it look more similar by changing around the camera a little bit and i will save the view hit okay if, because we select the offset surface to lose, so this part is not going to be very good match, but that's totally fine uh, because this is architecture. So we don't have to make sure that they are going to match so well. In this case, let's turn on the zebra and take a look. 
just for the sake of explanation, you can see that there is no continuity at all. Mm -hmm. But since we already moved them around right here, those control points. So even we do offset surface, set the loose to no, we still not going to have good continuity. But again, in architecture, this is totally fine. In Velocity's drawings, he only showing you on this side. That's because on the other side, there are some things that's hard to explain. For example, the details. How does this wall goes to here and what's the environment on the back? He just refused to answer in question by not showing it. I'm going to add some details here to make it more reasonable. So what I'm going to do the first is I will select this surface. And instead of having a sort of retaining wall here, what I'm going to do is I will offset the whole surface. So I'll just type in offset surface, flip it, 45. And then I'll get this, go to perspective. This is what it looks like. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I will select all those surfaces and then I will explode it. I'll delete this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, go to perspective. So this is what we're going to get on this surface. They have this height and this should be flat, right? But goes to here, it's no longer the same height. So they are complicated situation here, okay? We can set up some stairs in between, things like that. So first thing first, I will try to solve the problem here, right? They have some shapes here, which is not seen right here. I will select those surfaces and then I will isolate them. What I'm gonna do is I will come over here, use split and I'll select this surface. And uh, right here, I will use ISO curve to split the surface. This is not the direction I want. So I'll go to direction, go to V. So I can split the surface here, right? Somewhere here, I think it's good enough. Hit okay. And I split the surface into two different parts. Why are we gonna use ISO curve? Because in that case, if we can turn on the control points, this kind of split will have a very good transition with the control points around. And then I will select this surface. I will use the same method. I will use ISO curve and I'll split it here. Then we go back here and unhide everything. Same thing here. We have to solve this problem. We have some overlap here. Check this one more time. And we realize that there's this kind of curvature here. This thing goes up just a little bit. So we will take care of that. Luckily we are in Rhino. So that's very easy to take care of. All I have to do is just turn on the control points and move this up just a little bit. Okay, go to perspective and go to top view. This looks fine. And what I'm gonna do the next is I will delete this surface and delete this surface. And I will use loft, type in L-O-F-T, select this one and then select this one. Hit enter and I'll get this. Oh. Because we split the surface here, so that's not a good method to do it. We can call this back by using this tool here, untrim. Okay, we select this edge and we got this surface back. And again, I will use loft, select this and select this, hit okay, I got it. And same here, I'll select this curve and I'll select this curve and got it. And then isolate those two objects, use split, select this one. Use ISO curve and uh, trim again, delete it. And then I will unhide everything. Right here, this looks like a two point perspective. I can fix that also. I will just go to properties and then I will change to two point perspective and I will hit okay. I'll click it, it doesn't allow me to do so. Let's see if we can do parallel. Okay, now it's parallel. That might look even better in this case. We're just gonna go with that but I would rather to work in just perspective. So, but you know that if you want to change this kind of uh, perspective, you can right click it and go to properties and uh, change this to parallel. So everything here will be parallel to each other. I change it back to perspective, double click it and I'll get this. See, we have thickness here. What I'm gonna do is I will select this surface, this surface and this surface, All right? Also this surface. I'll join them back together. I will type, offset surface and I'll flip them by clicking it and I will change it distance to one foot and hit enter and hit okay. So let's see if there's some problems. So this edge right here has some problem. You can see that 
we'll select this and explode it and deselect this surface. Again, I will join those together and then I will offset them. Offset surface, flip it, one feet is good. Now this problem has been solved. Right here, this surface, if we offset this by itself, offset surface, you will see that there's this edge going to be overlap here. This edge condition going to be seen. This is before, this is after. And we don't want the surfaces to be overlap with each other. It's not good for the rendering purpose. So in order to solve that problem, what I can do is, again, I will go to split surface using ISO curve. And this time I will call the direction to U right here. And then I will split it over here and split it over here. Hit enter. Now I get this surface and I will offset surface one more time, flip it and one feet is good. Now we are not gonna see this kind of corner problem here. Then I will select this surface, this surface and this surface. I will join them all together and I will offset them. Same thing here, we don't wanna have this overlap such as this, come to split and the ISO curve, split it here, split it here and hit enter. I'll get this surface. I will offset surface, flip it, one foot is good. And same here, we had this problem right early on. So let's just go back a few steps and explode it and hide it, join them back together, select this surface, offset the surface, Perfect. Right, we have some problem here. That's because we join the surfaces together when we um, offset them. What I can do is, again, I will explode everything, deselect this surface, offset surface. Again, sometimes because of the algorithm itself, you have to be very careful. So I'll clean this mess up. I will split the surface. Okay, same right here. So now let's check one more time, see if there's any problem. Let's first go to perspective and go to our top view, reference photo, and we see few things we are missing here. First, we don't have this railings, right? And secondly, we don't have this ceiling and the window assembly or the door and everything. So you can see that there's a clear slope from here to here. What I'm gonna do the first is I will take care of the railing, simply move this and offset this curve a little bit, and then choose like, let's say two feet, extrude it for four feet, maybe a little bit higher. I will do six feet. Same right here. And then again, offset the, curve. Also come over here. And then for this part, it's also very simple for the ceiling and everything. What I'm going to do is I will type in extract ISO curve. Not what I want. I will click and get redirection. And let me try here first. I'll hit enter and call this curve. I'll extrude it. And then I will type in loft from this edge to this edge, hit enter, got it. Okay, let me go to perspective. This is simply too deep. That's not what we want. So what I'm gonna do is I'll move this curve out a little bit. Again, extract ISO curve, select the surface somewhere here, hit enter, and then control C, control V and set PT. I can change the Z value and make it align with this floor. Okay, and one more time, I'm gonna loft it from here to here. Go to perspective and go to the reference. Still, that looks too deep and too much. So one more time, I'm gonna use extract ISO curve somewhere here, hit enter, and then extrude it higher somewhere here, go to perspective, go to top. Okay, this looks better. And then I will loft it one more time, select this curve and select this curve, hit enter, got it. Okay, now this looks better. And same thing here, 
let me see how far it is. Let me measure it. It's 15 feet. What I can do is I will draw a circle here, 15, and then I'll hide this. Again, I will type in extract, ISO curve, select the surface, and uh, somewhere here. It doesn't have to be that accurate. Hit enter, and I'll get it. But in this case, you see that they are not parallel anymore. So extract ISO curve is not a good way to do so. What I'm going to do is select this curve and simply type in offset for 13 feet. Okay. But right here, you see that they are kind of like not on the same position. What I'm going to do is simply I can move it around a little bit. Make sure you turn on the O snap and you turn on the near. So you can select anywhere on the curve, extrude it. And then one more time, I will loft it. This and this. Hit enter. Got your saved view. And now it looks better. Same thing right here. Once again. This part is our own modeling. It's different from the example, but don't worry. Again, this is just teaching you how to form this in Rhino. The next part is I'm going to model the stairs inside. So I will just use 10 inches wrong and uh, nine inches rise. All right, this can be very tricky here because they have this curvature. So select this and select this, isolate them. I will make a calculation. So select this point and uh, set PT, check the Z value, select this one, and then I'll make connection here. We have the curve and type in taper. We can select here, select here. So we have 6.656.65. Feet to inches. Okay, so we have almost 80 inches. Our goal is to divide it into like seven inches per segments. So, what I'm going to do is I will just do 12. So, I will divide and then segments I'll set to 12 and I got it. Same right here. I'll just select all of them, make a copy from here to here. And then let's talk about the wrong. So let's just do 11. We have 12 segments in between. So times 11, there will be 132. So from here to here, there'll be 132 inches. And how we can do that, I will select here and type in 132 inches, of course, and right here also. So I'm gonna just type here 132. So I will just simply select here and select here. And the next part I will do is I will Type in extract ISO curve, select this, and then I will change it to U direction. Stop it right here. And right here also, I will change to U direction, hit OK. And then I will split it, or I will just come over here, point. OK, so select here. Once again, so I will just use point right here, hit OK. And then I got this curve. Also, I will get the other curve on the other side by using the same method. So we get everything here. That's all what we're gonna need. Okay, I'm gonna select everything here, everything here, and I'll isolate them. And then I will select those two curves, divide them into 12 segments, draw one here, draw one here, draw one here, Hit okay. And this one, I select the wrong. Do one more time from the bottom to the bottom. And then set PT. And of course, this one will be here. This one will be here, so on and so forth. Again, inside of Grasshopper, it's gonna be much easier to do so by just using a series and move. What I can do is I will just use taper from here to here. It says 0 0.55 feet. So I will just click here and minus 0 0.55 and I will get this. And again, loft everything here, here, loft. Here, here, loft. 
And then I will unhide everything. And then I will unhide this. I will unhide this. Maybe we made one extra one, but that's fine. Finally, we will take care of this landscape. I strongly suggest you not make this kind of landscape inside Rhino because this is just simply the wrong software to do so. You should use Unreal Engine or other software to do it. But if you really want to do it, we can do a very simple one. I'll just type in REC, select somewhere here to here. Type in Planner, Surface, select this one and type in Rebuild. I will just use 8877. That means eight control points on U direction eight control points on V direction. And then I'm going to select everything and then I'll lock them. Select the control points and I'll start to move. That's it. Let's go to the top view and make a comparison with our reference photo. And let's check what we have. Okay. Thank you so much for your attention. Please follow this tutorial. I'm looking forward to see you in our next tutorial.